Now, now let's go to Rick Tyler, communications director for Ted Cruz's campaign. Rick, first of all, thanks for joining me. Good Sunday morning to you, Reverend. Now, how can Cruz catch up with Trump? Well, you know, we think we're, we're even, and we have a superior ground game here. We've got about 12,000 volunteers. We've got uh, nearly all of our precincts covered, over 1,500 precinct captains covering some 1,600 different precincts. We also have someone speaking at every, every caucus, and we're knocking on about uh, 2,000 doors a day. Yesterday, from our headquarters, we made over 27,000 phone calls to Iowa voters. So the, the game is to turn them out. 27,000 calls. 12,000 people on the ground. I know the caucus, uh, the caucus process very well. But are you hearing anybody in your uh, opposition having a significant ground game? Because the question is, with Trump ahead in the polls, does he have a ground game? By now, you would be feeling it. You know, I think that's exactly right. We've been very open about our ground game. We have press coming through our headquarters every day to see what's going on. They go out with us door knocking. Uh, we have about over 100 people living in a place we call Camp Cruz, which is a which is an old college dormitory that's just full of people, uh, tripled up on air mattresses. They get up every morning and they start working. They head toward the headquarters about seven o'clock in the morning. They get their marching orders, and and we just don't see the same uh, kind of uh, activity in the other campaigns. Um, you know, back in 2008, Reverend Barack Obama. Obama turned out a large number of new caucus voters, but you could feel it here on the ground. You can measure it in the voter registration. You can measure it in the data, and we don't see that, that type of activity. So we'll probably get a record caucus still, but it won't be some of the proje projections that are driving some of these. So I'm pretty comfortable about where we are. Are you concerned, as some reports say, uh, that your campaign is about Marco Rubio? Well, look, uh, Marco Rubio in the in the Des Moines Register poll placed about third. That's where we've seen him. It doesn't look like he's going to really break out of that. And, and the, really, the reason is referenced is because in the Republican Party, he was a supporter, a chief sponsor of the, the Gang of Eight bill, which was a pro-amnesty bill that gave illegal aliens a pathway to citizenship. Our party rejects that. And and if our party is to nominate someone who is pro-amnesty, I, I really think we will lose to Hillary Clinton. Or now it looks like Bernie Sanders. He, he, Bernie did very well in the poll yesterday as well. Little dig in there, but, I, but I'll let it go. Let, let me ask <laughs> Try you. Try to be kind. <laughs> yeah, let, let me ask you, what is the real significance of a victory in Iowa to Ted Cruz? What will it mean if you can pull it off tomorrow night? And what will it mean if you don't pull it off? Well, let me sort of list the opposition. We've had uh, two former caucus winners running against us. We have a lot of people running in our lane, which is the evangelical lane, um, including at one time Rick Perry, uh, Bobby Jindal. Ben Carson is still running in that lane. Uh, Rick Santorum, Mike Huckabee. We had the sitting governor uh, call openly for our defeat. We had the secretary of state attack us. Yesterday, we've had millions of dollars spent against, against us. But even after all that, we really think we, we could win. It would be very significant because about 11 states that go before March 15th have a 50% evangelical turnout or more. And on March 1st, you have states like Tennessee is 70% or more. Texas is over 50%. Georgia is over 60%. Uh, Alabama is over 60%. So if we can show that we can turn out evangelical voters here and they can have a say in the process, we should do very well in South Carolina and we should do very well in the March 1st states. But by the way, we're also doing well in New Hampshire where we've, we've been tied for second place. I, I wouldn't appreciate that. I don't think anyone else would either. So we seem to have a very broad appeal. Rick Tyler, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you, Reverend.